Hello, and welcome to eMotors Direct Channel. I'm your host, Keith. Today, we're talking about choosing a variable frequency drive for a three-phase motor. This video is for industrial maintenance technicians, electrical contractors, or anyone searching for a VFD to match their project. Before we dive in, let's talk about why it's important to size your VFD correctly. If you install a VFD that is too small or undersized for your application, you will come across two major overload problems. If your drive is equipped with overload protection, it'll trip frequently which saves a drive but brings your work to a halt. Alternatively, the extra current the motor is trying to draw will lead to an excess of heat that causes catastrophic damage to the internal components of the drive. On the other hand, installing a BFD that is too large or oversized for your application won't lead to any damage. You would just be unnecessarily spending budget that could go to better use. With all the options out there, how do you get the right BFD for your application? Today, we're covering the top things to look for to help you choose a VFD for your electric motor application. A lot of information you need can be found right here on the nameplate of your motor. The most important rating to find is the motor's full load amps or FLA. The FLA indicates the motor's current demands. Matching this rating to the VFD ensures that the VFD can handle the demand of the motor. In theory, you'll wanna find a VFD with slightly higher FLA to allow for possible short-term overload situations to avoid overheating the drive. However, most manufacturers do build the VFDs to accommodate for minor overloading. For example, if you have a 10 horsepower motor, you're probably fine to get a 10 horsepower VFD. In this example, the 575 volt motor draws 10 amps. The VFD is probably rated for 12 or 13 amps, and even with minor overloading, you'll probably be fine. Where we have seen customers oversize the VFD, are the more adverse prone to overload conditions, like in an aggregate application where the motor could be prone to consistent overloading. Generally speaking, you can match the motor horsepower to the VFD horsepower and you'll be set. Next, you'll check the voltage. You wanna ensure this matches the source power of your supply as well as the motor you'll be using. The equipment won't operate on incorrect voltage. The RPM is important to note, especially if you intend to run your motor above or below the manufacturer's rated speed. You should not run your motor at speeds lower than the manufactured recommended turndown as the motor will be damaged due to overheating. And running your motor above the max rated speed will also cause problems. As the speed increases, the torque decreases. So the motor will have to work harder to move the load and easily become overloaded. Check to see if the motor is rated as inverter duty. You would find this either on the nameplate in the manufacturer's data pack or contact your distributor. You can also find data packs for over 10,000 motors at eMotorsDirect.ca. These days, all new motors are VFD rated. They would just have different speed ranges. Generally, the slower you want to run it, the more you'll pay for the motor. VFDs can cause a lot of stress on your motor components. An inverter duty motor is manufactured with higher speed rated winding insulation. Some of them can be factory ordered with options such as grounding rings, insulated bearings, and an additional cooling system, like a blower all to help protect the motor from overload. For the remaining considerations, understanding your intended application and the environment it is installed in is key. Your application's load requirements are either constant torque or variable torque. Constant torque loads are the most common. I'd guess 98% of the VFDs out there are running CT loads. These are your conveyor systems, hoists, compressors, and mixers. CT loads require constant torque across all speed ranges. As such, constant torque VFDs need an overload capacity of 150% or more to provide the torque needed to start up and to overcome sudden changes in load. The other 2%, by my guess, are variable torque loads. Your centrifugal pumps, fans, and blowers. Variable torque loads require much less torque at startup, and then the torque increases as the speed increases. Variable torque VFDs only require an overload capacity of 120%. Just like motors, VFDs also require different enclosure types with varying ingress protection to protect the VFD's internal components from environmental contaminants. Know the environment where you intend to install your VFD to adequately protect it from contaminants like water, dust, or fingers. VFDs are essentially computers that have vents and fans in them. If they are not mounted in a clean, dry, warm mechanical room, they need to be mounted inside of an enclosure. Some smaller VFDs come in NEMA 4 enclosures. So if you're mounting it in a dirty application and under say 20 horsepower, search for a NEMA 4 enclosure. On the other hand, if you're dealing with over 20 horsepower, you'll want to mount it in a separate enclosure. An unexpected consideration is altitude. The air gets thinner as you get further away from sea level and thinner air has a harder time cooling the drive. VFDs are intended for altitude of zero to a thousand meters. 
For every 100 meters above that, the top operating temperature decreases by 0.5 degrees Celsius. Make sure you know the altitude of your application as you may need to oversize your VFD to handle the heat. Canada has more than 30 communities that are 1,000 meters above sea level, including Banff, Alberta, and Fernie, British Columbia. However, typically these are cooler environments anyways, so even if you are over 1,000 feet above sea level, make sure you factor in all the environmental considerations. Which leads us to our last point. The last element to consider is the temperature of your application's environment. VFDs are sensitive to drastic changes in temperature. In areas that are too hot, the VFD will have difficult time exhausting heat, which can lead to damaging the circuit board. Alternatively, if the area is too cold, the capacitors in the VFD may fail. If your application is outdoors in a climate that can change drastically throughout the year, like here in Canada, you may need to install an additional cooling system for the summer. As for the winter, you may need to install your VFD in a heated shed or a heated enclosure. Selecting a VFD that'll work effectively and efficiently in your application doesn't have to be an overwhelming task. Knowing what ratings to look for on your motor's nameplate and having a good understanding of your application's environment will help you make your selection. If your application has unique circumstance or you'd like a hand in selecting your VFD, contact the experts at eMotors Direct. They'd love to support you on your electric motor project. You'll find the contact in the description below. If you have anything to add, if you have any questions or you have a suggestion for another topic for me to cover, leave me a comment below. Make sure you like this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. I'm Keith with eMotors Direct, your source for industrial motors, gear reducers, controllers, parts and accessories across Canada. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.